Kathy. I just wanted to show you some of the things that I've been up to. Um, I'm about to make a card for Creative Scrapbooker magazine. I really am not sure what I'm doing, but I'll kind of tell you the process when I don't know what I want to do. So um, what I did was I looked at some of the things that I had gotten in my last order and I got, uh, oh look, my stamp set's under my thing of cantaloupe. I'm doing this detox and apparently uh, cantaloupe gets toxins out of your body. So I'm working my way through that. Anyway, here's Father Christmas and Christmas magic. And lately I've been loving the look of just watercolor cards, plain ones. So I thought I'd just start there. What I end up doing is whenever I watercolor, I always use watercolor paper and I always emboss, heat emboss it. So usually I take a few images and um, just kind of stamp away and make multiple images, giving me lots of room to make mistakes. So that's another card, Happy Ornament. And I bought this stamp specifically to do some watercoloring. You notice that um, I kind of like my cards to be a little bit smaller. Three and a half by five is my favorite. But uh, I kind of played with the idea of Santa and his toy sack. But in the end, I really like this best where it's just Santa alone. So I thought he needed a greeting. So I decided that I would use a greeting. So I'm gonna do that here for you now. So you're just gonna see exactly all the stuff that I do, all the mistakes that I make. But mistakes is kind of how what works for me. So I have this um, trick that I do when after I do the embossing I wipe away the extra little powders around so you don't get those. Oh that must be part of the paper. So I blow that all. Um, I also use an embossing buddy. I don't know if I used it that time. Who knows? So I'm going to lay that down, I'm going to wipe the table away, try to get it back into the jar. And the reason why I like to use, well the reason why I almost always use emboss it with heat is because it, when you're watercoloring it kind of makes like, allows the water to cool. Whereas if you do use archival ink, um, or your stays on, then the water kind of spreads easier. So for me, it just is more forgiving. And of course it looks nicer in my opinion. I'll show you another quick trick too. So that's the card I'm going to color for you. So you can see here I did the train. That train is also from Christmas Magic, it's called. Um, I have this sentiment and I stamped it poorly, which happens to me all the time. So I'll just heat emboss this real quick. that's done um, so I'll show you a little trick you can see how that's not correct all I do after the fact is I cheat I like the small one best when it's a sentiment and I go back over the spots that I miss oh for goodness sakes that's supposed to be an S I guess I'm gonna have to do this one over but even still I'll show you my other trick so you can see how that's a bit of a mess. See how the S is a mess? I'm really not sure if you can see that, but 
Um, I used to have this white jelly bean. And Stampin' Up! sells them. But I don't have one in my bin right now. So I will go in and use a white pen. It's not working very well, but go in and use a white pen over it and it works does wonders so instead of me recreating this card I'll just cheat um so let me put this away before I spill this everywhere because I already did that once I am a complete klutz because I try to rush I've tried to rush everything all the time so um I've talked a lot of times about how I cheat coloring as well and it's not the best way to watercolor but it's the easiest so for me when I start making cards and I'm doing multiples I'll often um, stamp a bunch like this or have a bunch already stamped and folded already to go and then I'll sit and watch TV with my husband while doing it so I'll just show you really quick. So you can see that I'm going right into the stamp. I'm just going to town coloring. This one's going to be a little bit tricky because I think that's part of a tree. So I'm coloring some of the edges. I don't really think about shading when it comes to watercolor. You can if you want. Uh, Stampin' Up! carries two aqua painters and in it comes a thin brush and a thick brush and you can tell that I almost always use the thin brush. So you need a paper towel, you need your markers, you need an aqua painter. And all it does is it's already moving the color. You're going to color over what you already colored. And you can tell that it's moving the color. Now, I'll show you on a bigger stamp. I'll just finish his jacket here. And you can tell. There'll be a bit of ink left on the tip. If you want to go there. I usually pick up color in the little areas. I usually have this on the side. There we go. That's better. I'm not sure I'm going to figure out if that's still the tree or not, but I think this is his jacket. Most certainly his sleeve. I definitely get really lazy with this. But I've done a lot of cards like this and it's by far the easiest way for me to do watercoloring. Now, you can also pick up color if you went outside. It's not perfect, but you can. So if I felt like that this just wasn't watercolory enough for me, or there was too much, you just pick up some of the color and wipe it on your paper towel. So now he's less red around there. So that's easy, right? Let me see. So then when you switch colors, you want to make sure it's clear on your paper towel. And uh, for white, I usually, especially in this case, I'm just doing little dashes. This is going to be for his coat. See how it's spreading a little bit right here? It's a little bit pink. I'm going to push that back in. Push that out, that red out. I'm gonna finish this. And then I'm gonna, that was a reminder to me that if the color is um, bleeding, that I need to. And it is. The easiest way to handle that is just to heat and heat dry it.
he's done. And then up here. I should really take a haunch out of that cantaloupe, seeing as I have to eat an entire thing today. I really don't get it. I really don't know why I have to eat an entire cantaloupe today. Don't worry, I can eat lots of other things. But basically no carbs and no sugar for the, or yeah, no carbs, no sugar. Nope, because that would be a sugar. That would be completely wrong. No carbs, no dairy. That's what it is. So of course there's sugar in the cantaloupe. I wonder, is that, yeah, that's little toys in his hand there. It's a little bit hard to tell on this stamp. <laughs> Stampin' Up! used to have this um, color called Blush Blossom in ink. This is how I have all my markers in here and my kids actually use them as well. So I'm in the process. So this is the Blush Blossom. Nope, that's Chris Cantaloupe. Huh. Um, anyways, it's a skin tone. So yeah, I usually, yeah, I usually cheat and use, if his face was a little close up, I would Put some red in there for um, for his cheeks, rosy cheeks. But not this time. You can see a little drum. It's very vintagey. Oh, okay, I can tell here. So he does have some animals in his pocket. Oh, and that thing there is a little clown. So you can't really tell in the stamped image because. Watercolor paper, when you stamp on it, it's watercolor paper is kind of bumpy. So it's not going to give you that like crisp stamp that you're looking for. It works out great for watercoloring, but you know, if you're doing a crisp image or a sentiment, it's probably not what you're looking for. So like, like if I were in front of the TV, I would have my other image and I would be coloring at the same time. I would kind of do all my bunch of green at once. You know, I kind of do that. You get the point. So that's a little too green for me. So I'm going to pull off some of that green. I want it to still look watercolor. Another way you can do it is just dab it. See how it pulls off. And you can see I went outside the line, so I'm just going to color that green and that goes away. So that is definitely green too. Should be green. I'm going to color that. What I'm going to do is belt yellow as well. Probably this here. Anyway, so everybody has their own way of doing things, and this is kind of mine. It's pretty quick and pretty painless, so that's mostly why I do it. I'm always looking for, um, so yeah, you got to use this tip. I'm always looking for ways to cheat, really. That's the new dapper denim. Looks really nice with this. I think I'll do the sack that color actually. And see how I can do a couple spots. Don't want it super dark. Get that nice watercolor look. Same thing on his hands. It's almost a little blue, too blue. 
It's not exact to what the picture's saying, but it's a little hard to tell. All right, you little cutie. Little clown there. What are we gonna do with you? I'm gonna put some, oh, that's the new Emerald MB, I think it is. This is Garden Green. Yep. Garden Green is really nice for wreaths and stuff like that. Put a green in there and I'll probably start playing around up there. I will probably now kinda put a little bit of blue up by his eyes. Um, let's see what else is going on. I don't really like that. Rich Razzleberry. Let's do that bunny. Rich Razzleberry. Let's see what it looks like. Oh, yeah. And then, um, a bit of the candy cane. So actually I'm going to lift some of the candy cane right off. Color off the candy cane. She can't see it very well. So you can also do this here. Just mark on your block with the tip. That's too much. So if you want more water, so here's good. I'll just put some water in there. Try again. There we go. Oh yeah, he's looking nice. What will I do there? I'm going to dry it. And I do do shadowing. What's this? What's this? Sahara sand. I almost always do a bit of shadowing at the bottom. I don't know what he's at. Whoop. Take that brown away. See how that worked. Obviously not dry enough. bit of a tough one to color. I think you get the point though. So sometimes I color the two rich raspberry twice or the two colors twice. Let's see how I have the yellow another yellow face in there. That's my um, way that I color. Actually, I'll, what's this one? Old Olive would be a nice color to have in here. That's how I color on my watercolor, all of them, all the time. Oh yeah, look how rich that came up. That's really nice. I'll put some of that up here too. On his hands. Um, yeah, so that is how I do my watercoloring. To finish this card off, I will probably put some um, glitter of sort around the jacket or these, um, these sequins totally I'm in love with. That Stampin' Up! is releasing on September 1st, which is tomorrow my time. Otherwise, that's it. Thanks for watching. Bye.